Hello everyone, welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol Battle Report for the channel and we're going to try and keep these more succinct as per the channel feedback I got from the community post I made about what you would like. So without further ado, we're just going to jump in and look at the two sides in this 18 threat match between the Avengers and the Sinister Six. Only four models making up the Avengers side's 18 threat being led by a third party sculpt of the Hulkbuster, I talked about it in the most recent Getting Stuff Painted if you're interested. Joined by the War Era Captain America, Steve Rogers Captain America and Vision and then I guess Venom warned them that the Sinister Six are up to something so that's why he is here filling it out. And their tactics cards which are a bit reflective and by a bit I mean a lot. Avengers Assemble, Second Wind, Lethal Protector, Helios Laser Bombardment and Tactical Analysis. Well, I called them the Sinister Six, but I guess it's technically the Sinister Seven because there is seven miniatures, even if two of them are minions. But they're being led by the new version of Doc Ock. Doc Ock is a Sinister Scientist, which is from the Mightiest Hero Starter Box. His Sinister Six affiliation, which is spider Foes, but it's called Sinister Six. Once per turn, uh, after you've been attacked by an enemy, if you're not dazed, you gain one power. And additionally, if you've suffered damage, you can remove Shock, Slow or Incinerate from yourself once per turn. Simple as that. Joined by some of the new releases making up the you know old school Sinister Six. So we have Electro, Vulture, Sandman and Shocker. Sandman has two of his minions, Sand Contracts as they're called. As per the ruling on AMG's form, he only starts on the board with one of them. And to make them he has to hurt himself but he has healing factor. So only one of those will be on the table to start with but he can in total have two. Their tactics cards are also very reflective. This is our day, Founding Members, Static Age, Surprise Webhead and Strategic Retreat. And the two crisis cards being played, the left side one is the Montesi formula, is three books, it's the threat value being played, one VP for each book you're holding, you can only ever hold one and it gives you access to a Beam 3 6 dice Mystic Attack. Then we have, I don't think we played the new version of Cosmic Vaults, they used to only be one power and blast you away if you roll certain things at the end of the turn. Now it's during the power phase, if you roll a crit or a wild, you gain two power and are pushed away small. Still one VP for each one you're controlling in the cleanup phase prior to that, and there's four of them on the map. And we can just very quickly just pull back here. So the three books are in a line, the book at the top and at the bottom here have a vault underneath them. They're just slightly overlapped to show that they're both there. And then on either flank of the table, are the other Cosmic Vaults. We'll get both sides set up and be back at deployment after this brief word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And we are back with all that done. At deployment, Avengers to your left, Sinister Six to your right. The Avengers are taking first activation although they will have passes and with the exception of the Sand Constructs, every single miniature for the spider Foes slash Sinister Six, I'm just going to call them the Sinister Six, uh, they're all on medium-sized bases, so they have a lot of movement to uh, contest with. Anyway, we have Vision down here on his lonesome, you can just about make out bottom left of your screen. The Hulkbuster and Venom are roughly in the middle of their deployment line, and then Cap is up at the top right. And then it's just a long line for the Sinister Six over here going Shocker, Vulture, Sand Construct, Sand Man, Doc Ock and Shocker right at the top of the table. So with that let's jump into round one and see how this plays out. The Avengers passed to start the game so over to the Sinister Six. Sandman activated and when he activates he can suffer two damage to place down a Sand Construct if he has less than two on the table. So he's placed down the other one, it gains an activated token right there and then. The one that he starts with though, it gets to activate and did two short moves to get right where you see it, a big old hand sticking out the middle of the table. Sandman himself, he only used one action, he moves small to the position you can see him in there. He paid one power to pick up the Montesi Formula book and is securing that back vault. Uh, with that, he ends his turn with two damage technically, however he has healing factor one, so he heals back one of that and he has six health on his healthy side I believe. The Avengers decided it was now that it was time to spring into action with the Hulkbuster moving up medium and then spending the two power it starts the game with because it gets an extra one in the power phase to do a hit and run at that point. Range three he could reach the hand sand construct with his uh, heavy repulsor blast. It's energy, sand constructs reduce damage received by one if it's a physical attack. 
not uh, applicable this instance but just letting it be known that that's what happens and he got it for four he didn't re really care he wanted the additional move plus uh, the one power it generates even if you miss sand constructs have two health one defense dice across the board so very easily has destroyed it when a sand construct deals damage or suffers damage sandman gains one power so he's gained one off of that the Hulkbuster used the free move as part of the hit and run he paid for to move within one of the central Motesi formula and he paid one power to pick it up with the power he generated killing the sand construct. Shocker was next up from the Sinister Six moving twice to get to the vault closest to the table edge at the bottom of the table here. As a quick note so we don't need to mention it going forward, Shocker has kind of like a permanent shock bubble around himself although it does actually stack with the shock status effect. Any attack that comes at him from within range 2 rolls one fewer die, which is a pretty decent little defense mechanism he has built in. And right up at the other end of the table, Cap activated and moved up a move and a half or a move and a quarter even, just to basically do the same thing as Shocker but with the secure vault at the top end of the table there. Vulture also moves medium but he is on that medium sized base and moved twice, I don't think it was a full second movement but just to get in position there with Shocker to defend that bottom vault, that means um, Vision can't just come in and contest and mean nobody scores it. He will not be able to do it by himself now, so he's probably going to have to rethink what he was going to do. Second last activation for the Avengers was the Lethal Protector himself, Venom, who has moved up once, forgot to move the movement tool, and is simply just staying there so that he's securing the vault closest to the Avengers deployment line. He paid one power and picked up the Montesi formula that also started in that exact location, so all the books are now in someone's possession. Second last activation of round one for the Sinister Six was Electro. Uh, definitely not doing a second take because I said Shocker the first time. I, I always get those two confused. Uh, uh, it's it's going to happen. Anyway, Electro, he moves small. So even though he's on that medium base, he is a bit slower than everybody else. That's how far he could get facing down Cap up there. He actually has a lot of defensive tech. If someone attacks him from within range three, he can pay one power just to do one damage back plus shock condition, which is really good. And I think he has an equivalent of Tricks and Traps as well, like um, Mysterio has. And he can eventually teleport around uh, via scenery, I believe, once he has enough power to play with. So we'll see him do some better stuff early on, uh, later on rather, but turn one isn't his turn. So Vision ended off round one for the Avengers and he's playing a bit safe because he can't contest to the vault because Shocker and Vulture will just outnumber him. So he moved Medium to where you can see him in front of the newsstand there and then he used Synthesis which is a superpower but it's also an action. He generates two power for himself. So he's sitting on three now and unless otherwise stated he's going to be in his high density form, his physical defense form since that's mostly what the enemy deal. There is some energy mixed in there so one way or the other he's going to have a bad time sooner or later depending on who goes after him but yeah and unless otherwise stated he's going to be in that better physical defense form anyway it's over to Doc Ock to end off the round so Doc Ock moves medium I don't think he moved the full length he wants to be within uh, contesting range of that closest vault so if it explodes in the power phase of round two he gets that juicy two power and he's pushed closer to who he wants to attack anyway. So from there he could do his arm lasers 2.0. It's an upgraded version of the original starter boxes, Doc Ock. It's beam 4, but it's only 4 dice energy on wilds it incinerates. Did it into the Hulkbuster. Uh, you can't see the damage there, but it did do 1 damage. It's blocked by the car. It did 1 damage to him. He didn't pay for built to take it. Thought 4 dice wouldn't be a bunch of a problem. Luckily didn't get the incinerate either. So just 1 damage to the Hulkbuster. And that takes us to scoring. So at the end of round one, the Avengers have two of the Montesi formula books. Venom's holding one, the Hulkbuster is holding one, they also hold two of the vaults. Venom is holding the one closest to their deployment and Cap is holding the other. So that gives them four victory points. We're going to handle the vaults potentially exploding and dishing out extra power in the power phase of round two because that's where it actually happens. You do the scoring for them first. The Sinister Six have the other Montesi formula in Sandman's hands and they hold the other two vaults. The one at the bottom of the table here with Vulture and Shocker and then Sandman and Doc Ock holding the other one over there. So four uh, to three in the Avengers' favour and with that into round two with the Avengers having priority again unless they decide to pass. So as we begin round two the Cosmic Vaults radiate energy and you roll one die for everyone within one and if you get a wild or a crit, they receive two power and are pushed small. 
with the small push being resolved by the opponent. So Vulcher, he generated two extra power and has been pushed right to the edge of a table here. The only other person to be pushed was Venom, who just kind of got pushed into the van, just sideways. So not much movement there. No one else gained anything beyond the normal power they get in the power phase. So with that, on to the activations. Well, a way was discovered to circumvent Electro's nonsense as the Hulkbuster activated, moved into the position that you can see and he didn't have enough power at that point to, to do the like tricks and traps equivalent he has, I think it's 3 power. And then he spent 3 on Meteor Punch, 8, power, uh, eight dice rather physical attack. The target does not generate power from the damage dealt. It includes a built in medium throw and if you get a wild it does explosive force but that wasn't relevant here because there's no enemies nearby. So the Hogbuster walloped Electro right in the jaw got the built-in throw as well, the punch itself did 4 damage, then he was thrown into the red car, which is larger than him so it's not been destroyed, but he does take 1 damage from the impact, so that is 5 damage to Electro, and now, after everything is resolved, he could have done that counter where he does 1 true damage plus shock, but now, thanks to that throw, which resolves first, the Hulkbuster is not within range 3, so he can't counter it, and he needs to move in position again. He's also one away from being dazed, but the Sinister 6 affiliation bonus kicks in now, so he generated extra power from that. So Electro activated because he wanted to do something before potentially Cap dazed him, and he found a way to get instantly back in the fight. He spent 2 power on Ride the Wires, I think it's called. You pick a scenery element within 3, he drops any objectives he's holding, which he wasn't, and then you place him within two. You can only do it once per turn, but that's how he gets extra distance, and he can actually cover quite a long distance with that. It's essentially a, a range five move, which is very fast. Anyway, so that meant he was over where you can see him, and he still had both actions. So he did his basic uh, attack, which is called Electric Discharge. I think it's five dice energy with shock on wilds, and his goal before getting dazed was to try and put shock on Cap and the Hulkbuster. He attacked them in that order. Cap spent on Vibranium Shield, didn't really need to, it was an appalling attack roll. He still took one damage though, because his defense roll was equally terrible. Didn't get shocked though. The Hulkbuster paid one for Built to take it, you have to decide to do that before you see the dice. He wasted it because it was another appalling attack roll, new model syndrome very much in effect, and also there was no wilds. So fully blocked and no shocks there either. So Electro didn't do that great, but I can definitely see the potential of his moving around the board with that Ride the Wires ability. Cap activated for the Avengers and decided to deal with Electro doing his basic Stars and Stripes into him for 2 damage, he had 1 health left, so that is him dazed. And we were a little unsure as to whether or not he could counter with his 1 true damage plus shock, because it doesn't say he has to still be standing after the attack is resolved. But I presume there is a ruling in the rule that says like, you can't activate those powers if you're dazed. Um, couldn't find it at a glance, so do let us know if that's like an, ex an exception or not. But we're not going to apply it here since that seems like the right thing. Anyway, after that, Cap spent two on on your left. He's not holding an objective token or anything, so he gets to move medium. And he did so, then he moved medium again as his other actual action, which is put him. It's a bit hard to see him from here. There we go. It's put him danger close. He's not contesting the vault or anything. He's too far from it. But he is making himself a threat that Sandman and Doc Ock might want to deal with instead of going elsewhere. We'll see. Well, they certainly didn't ignore him. Sandman activated and immediately did two damage to himself to bring back the other sand construct. At the end of his activation, he heals one though, so he's in total got two damage on him, I think. The sand totem that he, or construct rather, that he brought back gets an activated token, so it didn't do anything. The other one moved small and then did four dice into Captain America who didn't have any power to play with, and he took three damage, which is bad enough. And then Sandman gets to activate after his grunts. He did his basic five dice physical, this time Cap spent on Vibranium Shield to have six defense dice, with which he didn't roll a single success, took four damage, he only had two health left, so he is dazed. That was pretty bad. Sandman does have an action left, he is opting to stay with that vault and defend it, so he's doing nothing else when his turn end ends, uh, he heals one, so... Well, Cap may have made a mistake going up there. The Avengers passed because they had two activations left to the Sinister Six's three. Vulture activated and has just repositioned himself since he got pushed back by the vault giving him power. He's placed himself a bit better this time such that really no matter which direction he gets pushed in, there's, there's going to be scenery in the way and he's still helping control that vault if Vision decides to try anything. Venom activated, moved small to where you can see him and then spent two on Web Snare to pull Otto into him, 
with hopes of getting him out of position and dealing some damage. Did his basic 5 dice strike into him. Uh, Otto managed to fully block it. Not only that, but he rolled a crit, so his scientific hubris passive kicks in and generates himself one power. The bleed happens regardless though, so he is bleeding, and that is one of the status conditions that does not get cured by the Sinister Six affiliation bonus he imparts upon his side. So he will have to shake that if he wants rid of it, but Venom underperformed there massively. And fearing that Vision was about to jump in with enough power to do his big spender, which is exactly what was going to happen, Auto activated, moved back to where he was within distance of the vault and just shook the bleed as his other action. He's playing defensively this turn, hoping to get some extra power from the vault in the power phase of turn 3. And so Vision activated, he flew over, or through I guess, the paper stand there so that he is contesting the vault that is hidden behind it, the one closest to the Avenger spawn line, just so they're generating some points and they should still stay one ahead of the Sinister Six as a result of that. And then for his other action he used Synthesis again, so he's now sitting on 6 power. Now that vault ends up exploding on him, he's going to be maxed out in the next power phase. And that means he can either do some good stuff or chip in a lot to Helios Laser Bombardment. So that's what we're hoping for. Anyway, it's over to Shocker to end off the second round. Well, Venom was actually in the danger zone of Shocker, who moved up medium, put him in range 3, his Builder and his Spender are both range 3. Thankfully, only his Spender is energy, because Venom does not like energy attacks, and he didn't have enough power to do that. He was shy 1, I think. So he just did his basic 5 dice physical. He didn't do enough damage to get through the defense roll, though, so no damage, but he did get a wild, and whether it does damage or not, if you roll a wild, it inflicts stun. So Venom's stunned, and that takes us to the scoring. And at the end of round two, both sides have had someone daze. Cap is in a terrible position there now. Honestly expected him to last longer than that. Could not believe a sand construct did four damage to him, three damage, however much it was too much. And when he used Vibranium Shield for six defense dice, nothing nothing came up. It was a bunch of skulls and blanks. Anywho, scoring. Two Montesi Formula books are still in the hands of the Avengers. One on Venom, one on the Hulkbuster. They still hold two of the vaults. The Hulkbuster is holding one and Vision is holding one. So they gained four again and that takes them to eight. The Sinister Six, six once again scored three. They've got the Montesi Formula on Sandman and they hold the other two vaults. So they're now trailing by two. But they're in a very advantageous position to just remove an activation entirely from the table if Cap goes down. And then it's six on three which isn't good odds. Um, we'll see what um, Electro can, no, yes, Electro, Electro Shocker. It doesn't help that Electro has so many attacks that inflict shock, you know what I mean? It's just confusing. Anyway, he's got a lot of power to play with as well, but we'll see what the vaults do as we go into the power phase for round three with Avengers still having first activation. So in the power phase for round three, Vision was the only person to be pushed by a vault. He ended up back there and has generated two extra powers. He's sitting on nine, I believe, right now. In the power phase, the Sinister Six are playing two tactics cards to activate now. This is our day, first of all, which will hopefully be in focus there. During the power phase, if you have fewer victory points than your opponent, allied Otto Octavius may play this card. This round, each time an allied character would drop an objective token, you place it instead of the opponent, and you can place it within three instead of within two. Additionally, each time an allied non-grunt character would be dazed or killed this round, each enemy character within two of it suffers one damage. That is really, really powerful, and I think that's from the new starter box. And then Founding Members is the other power phase card being played right here. So this is a long one, but we don't need to read the latter half, mostly. Uh, during the power phase, an allied spider foes character can play this card, which the Sinister Six are. During this round, each time an enemy character suffers damage from an allied effect, choose up to one of the listed allied characters that's within two and they get a special condition. So if Sandman's within two, you can inflict snow, if snow, slow. If Vulture's within two, you get bleed. If Doc Hawk is within two, you get stun. And Electro is shock. Craven and Mysterio obviously aren't here, so that doesn't matter. But that's two cards that are in play for the entire round. And I think this is our day is going to be big because that applies even if the sand constructs get destroyed, I think. Ah, uh, no, non-grunt, so it would have to be Sandman himself, but still, pretty powerful card. The Hulkbuster got the round started, and I'm sure you can tell by the number of tokens and things moved and not on the table anymore that a lot happened, so let's cover it. He activated, he ended up not moving at all, so he's still securing that vault over there, but he opened his turn with Helios Laser Bombardment. Two dice base, he popped in one power to buff that up to three, and then Vision put in everything he had, so I think that was nine. So it was like 11 or 12 dice in total, 
You do the attack listed, range 5 doesn't require line of sight, he dropped the death beam from space on Sandman, and did get a wild, so Doc Ock took 1 damage from that as well, from the, the burst. It did 6 to Sandman, I think he only had like 3 health left, um, maybe 4. Either way, certainly not 6. So Sandman dazed, that means both his sand constructs immediately disappear, although they also took damage from the explosion, so he generated a couple of power before that, uh, I think, because of the order of operations. Either way, he dazed, he dropped the objective he was holding, so this is our day kicks in, it's placed within 3, so it's been placed down here, and he does a little burst of damage at any, anyone within range 2, and does 1 damage, so Cap has taken 1 damage from that. For the Hulkbuster's other actual action, he just fired his Heavy Repulsor Blast into Electro, and got him for 2 damage. Has a built-in shove backwards small, and that means he ended up out of range 3 again, so he couldn't even counter for the true damage plus shock. So as it turns out, the Hulkbuster is a pretty hard counter to poor Electro up there. But yeah, he had a good turn, and that is Sandman not getting an activation in both his constructs off the table. And a Matesi formula on the board, ready to get picked up by someone. Shocker activated, he moved next to the book that dropped, he paid one power, picked it up, and then has moved full medium move all the way down here to just try and be super safe. If he just sits down there, there's a good chance he's going to be generating two victory points a turn without anyone harassing him. So I think that's the game plan here, and that frees up Vulture to do other stuff, so yeah, that seemed like the smartest thing for it. Well, Venom did have a bone to pick after not doing much to Doc Ock last turn, and decided to just chase up on that. Moved into Doc Ock's face, where you can see him, not within contesting range of the vault. He just did his basic strike, because of uh, the stun, he doesn't really have a lot of power. He, the plan was to then chuck the dumpster at him, however the roll for the 5 dice and the strike had 3 crits, 2 of which converted into other damage, and Doc Ock's defense roll had 1 success. Well it was a crit, but it converted into nothing else. He generates another power for that, but I think he's already at 10 power now. Either way, that 6 damage would have taken him to dazed from full health, so he was already a little bit hurt. He is dazed, which is pretty amazing. Uh, he didn't have a book on him or anything like that though, and... Venom isn't doing anything else because there's no one to chuck. He was going to chuck the dumpster, but Sandman's dazed as well. That denies Doc Ock an activation and that could be big. Electro activated and he managed to do some good stuff. First of all, he spent two on uh, Ride the Wires again. So he was placed within two of that lamp he's been using to teleport around. He isn't holding an objective, so he didn't drop anything. Then he spent on his big spender, which is Overload the Grid. You can pick a size three or less terrain feature within three of him I think it is, you destroy it and it adds dice equal to the size, so he destroyed the car there and I guess, I don't know, took power from the battery or whatever, and was blasting nine dice into Cap who did spend on Vibranium Shield but he took four damage exactly enough that he ain't Captain America no more. Isn't even getting the chance to use Second Wind or anything like that to live now. That sucks, but Cap is off the table. He still had an action left since riding the wire was not an action. So then he just did his basic electric discharge into Venom. Only managed to do one damage to Venom, but did finally manage to inflict someone with the shock status. It only took three turns. And so that's Venom collecting status effects like Pokemon gym badges. With Cap's untimely demise, that meant just Vision was left for the Avengers. He hopped up onto the newsstand there. He is still within one of the vault that is hidden behind it, so he just ended his turn there. Spent on Synthesis as his other action to generate two flat power. And that's it. So it's over to Vulture now, right? Yeah, Vulture because of everyone, everyone else being dazed. And Vulture was a sneaky little Vulture because they might be killing people, but they've got to make up for that point spread difference. Vulture does medium move twice, and thanks to that medium sized base of his, he was able to get where you can see him, which is contesting that vault. So, as we end the round, no one's going to be scoring that one since they're both on their healthy side. And granted, he's taking chances going after Vision, who's just building power again, but denies a point this round. On that note, let's go to scoring. So, that's scoring for round three. The Sinister Six actually are still staying the same distance apart because they were also denied a point and they've only denied the Avengers 1, but to go over it specifically, the Avengers, they still hold two Montesi formulas, Venom and the Hulkbuster, and they hold one vault, the one the Hulkbuster is just planting his flag at. So they only gained three this turn instead of four, taking them to 11 of the 16 required to win. The Sinister Six, they have the other book on Shocker now, who is also guarding the vault to the bottom of your screen here, and that is it. This one is contested, Hulkbuster holds that one, and thanks to Doc Ock and Sandman being dazed, no one 
is holding the one on the right. The plan was for Captain America to go nab that, and we saw how that ended. So they only gained up to eight there. So 11 plays eight in the Avengers' favor. They're a man down now. There's only three of them left on the table, and they're still having first activation as we go into round four. So round four opened with an exceptionally tactical turn from the Hulkbuster. I'm not just saying that because it's a pun based on a tactics card that was played. So to start with, he paid two for hit and run, so that's an attack and then a move. And he just did his basic heavy repulsor blast into Vulture. Two damage, that does unfortunately do a forced push, it's not optional. So Vulture has been pushed right back where he was essentially, right next to the vault there. But he's taken two damage, so there's that. Then he moved to where you can see him, and the reason he specifically moved there was so he's still just within one of the vault, he was within range 3 of Electro and within range 3 of Venom. He then paid 2, which he generated from hitting Vulture, on Tactical Analysis. An active, the active character may play 2, you pick a character, allied character, within 3 and advance them small. That's to try and get Venom out of the predicament he's put himself in <laughs> over there. Then he still had another actual action, because he did hit and run to move where he was. So he spent the last three power he had on another Meteor Punch and just walloped Electro in the teeth again. It did four, uh, sorry, it did three damage and then the built-in medium throw he chucked him into Sandman. That does the one flat damage required that Electro is out of there. I had no idea he would have been hard countered by the Hulkbuster constantly pushing him away, but there you go. Sandman almost whiffed. He doesn't have any kind of defense against uh, like stuff being thrown into him. His sand constructs do. They don't take damage from that. But he doesn't seem to have any rule that says that. So he took one damage after his dodge roll. Really good turn there from the Hulkbuster. So Doc Ock activated and he had one simple goal. Take out Venom. He's holding a book so it makes sense. Uh, he wanted to use Surprise Webhead. It's a bit like Wakanda Forever but the you can only select one target for everyone who spends power to attack. So that wasn't any good because Vulture needs range 2 for his free attack, so Venom is actually out of that where he is. So instead he just did two arm laser 2.0s because it's only 4 dice energy but Venom only has 2 energy defense. And oh boy did Doc Ock spike with the first one. He did 5 damage, that's from just the one. The second one however was a whiff, basically he dodged it on his, or blocked it on his 2 defense dice. Did get incinerated on that second one though because a wild was rolled. So then, frustrated Doc Ock spent on his pick up and throw, forgotten what it's called. It is called Doc Ock's Grasp, I think. So he picked up the size 2 dumpster there, chucked it at Venom, and here was me thinking, wow, is the Hulkbuster affiliation bonus actually finally going to do something? Because it reduces collision damage by 1 with no minimum. But no, he just dodged it. <laughs> so the Hulkbuster affiliation bonus still doing nothing, but whatever. So Venom actually lived on 1 health and collected another Infinity Stone for his status effect gauntlet. Well, Venom activated, he moved small, he couldn't get close enough to contest or hold the vault back there. He just wants to get away from Sandman as best he can. From where he is, he had exactly three power since he's only generating one on that damage he took just now thanks to that stun not being taken away. But that did mean he had enough for so many snacks, so, or we are Venom, whatever his actual spender is. I always forget if it's the superpower or the skill name, either way. He did it into Vulture and did 3 damage to him with the 2 Vulture already had on him. He is dazed, so no activation for him this round. That also means that Venom has healed 3 damage, so he's a bit more likely to stand up after Sandman inevitably ends up going after him, leaving just Vision to activate for the Avengers, but it could be Sandman now or Shocker. And of those 2, Sandman activated and he moves small, so that's what he did to get where you can see him and has nothing, even though he's sitting on a ridiculous amount of power, he has nothing he can throw at Venom, can't pick up and throw anything, can't pick up and throw him, so he's just in position, uh, it's, I don't think if the Avengers can get to 16 this turn, so there is going to be another round, so he's just shaping up, or setting up rather, to smack Venom then. Well, considering from where he is, Vision is already holding that vault, now the Vulture is dazed, he did Synthesis to generate 2 power, that put him 1 over what he needed for Synthesoid Avenger, range 3, 7 dice, physical and the opponent does not count crits as successes or add additional dice for crits. Didn't roll that well with it to be honest. He still managed to do 2 damage into Sandman, that puts him at 3 in total I think and he's got 7 health on his day side. He's getting there and that is it for the Avengers round. For Shocker down here we can just cover it real quick because he is holding a book and he is holding a vault so he is just staying where he is to generate that 2 power safe, uh, two victory points rather. 
safely down there. So we're just going from here straight into scoring for the round. So as things stand at the end of round four, the Avengers still hold two of the books on the same two people and they hold two vaults. Vision's holding one, the Hulkbuster's holding one. So they gained four, taking them up to 15 of the 16 required to win. So as long as they get one victory point and the Sinister Six don't get seven or six, ironically, um, they'll definitely win next round. But we're still going to play round five. In terms of what the Sinister Six gained this turn, Shocker's still got that book and he and Doc Ock are holding vaults. So they gained three, they're up to 11, they're trailing by four and the Avengers are still going first. So we'll jump into round five and see what the vaults do. And once again, this round opened with a very tactical activation by the Hulkbuster, uh, who has to push if he does this heavy repulsor blast. It's not an optional one, as mentioned earlier. So from where he started his turn, he did it into Sandman, did one damage, not great, pushed him back, but luckily caught the car there so he doesn't get pushed back further. And, oh, did I say he paid for hit and run before that? He paid two for hit and run so that he could move in such a way that he's still staying within three of where Sandman was pushed to, but still within uh, contesting range of the vault he's at. And then he did another heavy repulsor blast, just hoping, getting him low enough that maybe Vision or Venom, if he lives, can finish him off. Actually, did three, and in total he had three on him already. So with that four damage across those two attacks, Sandman's actually out of there, which was a much better result than I was expecting. So Sandman is off the table, and yeah, he's not getting in. Oh wait, no he isn't. He is not. Because he had healing fat. Oh wait, no, he didn't activate, yeah. I can't remember if he'd activated already when he had the damage from last round. Oh no. Had he activated prior to getting hit last round? Because if not, he would have healed one with healing factor. So he would have still had one health left. Did he move first? He was chasing Venom. Oh, he was chasing Venom and then Vision hit him. Yes, okay. So the healing factor time passed and then Vision hit him. Yeah, okay. I think we're fine. If that is a mistake, I apologise, but I do, yeah, Venom definitely, uh, Vision definitely hit him afterwards. So hopefully that is correct. Well, Vulture is a bit hard to, oh, there's the camera moves. <laughs> Vulture was a bit hard to see over there, but he did his big spender. It's called Skyline Hunter. It's three power, I think. It's eight dice physical, and if the target is size three or less, you can chuck them away. Um, but he didn't do that because the Hulkbuster affiliation bonus would just mean Venom takes no damage. It's because it's one flat and it gets reduced by one with no minimum. So didn't do that. The first one absolutely whiffed. He fully blocked it despite having one less defense die. He was rolling three instead of four. It's a physical attack. Second one though, that got him a bit better. It got him for three, but Venom lived on one health. And I think that's probably going to spell the end for the spy, uh, spider foes slash sinister six. I don't think they'll be able to catch Venom now because uh, Venom's just going to run away. And Doc Ock. Well, Doc Ock has a range 4 energy, actually. So is it even worth doing that? Because he may as well give up his point, because it's not going to be enough to win. But even with that, the Hulkbuster is securing 2 where he is, and they only need 1. So, I don't think there's any way for them to win, but let's let's just give, to give it a couple more activations and see. Well, after 2 moves, Venom can hide behind the newsstand right here. Doc Ock cannot see him after 1 move, nor would he be within range 4. He could move twice and then if there was another round, sure, but they're going to score enough to win this round. However, went back and double, like really double checked and Sandman definitely should have survived on one because he should have healed one at the end of the activation in which Vision then attacked him. It was forgotten about. So he should have had one health left. Does that change things? Technically, yes. What, Vision, what would have happened with Vision would activate and try and take out Sandman. I think the chances of him doing one damage is probably pretty high across two attacks because he doesn't need to move. Um, so it probably would have meant Venom went down, but Sandman would still get taken out one way or the other by Vision. And does it change the final scores? Yeah, it would mean that Venom would drop the book he had, but if Sandman picked it up, he would have dropped it from getting hit. Doc Ock and Shocker wouldn't have been able to reach him and would not have changed anything in that fight. So it doesn't really change the ultimate outcome beyond there being a one point difference that there shouldn't have been. So we did eventually spot it, work it out where the mistake was. But hey, you forget things in the moment. So healing if you forget healing factor, you forget healing factor. So we're going to the final scores now because there's no way to stop the Avengers surpassing 16. So at the end of the game, the Avengers only needed one point. They were on 15 and they are actually scoring 
two, three, four. They're scoring four, so they got up to 19. If you want to discount that uh, book that Venom is holding on the presumption that Sandman would have been able to do enough damage to take him off, or daze him rather, then sure, they would have got to 18. That's still over 16. And the Spider Foes slash Sinister Six, they were at 11 and they gained three. So 14 for them, which is a fair score, honestly. It's, it was pretty close, but that does mean the Avengers are taking the victory today. And with that said, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Obviously, there was a lot of new characters on the table today that we haven't seen, so it's natural to forget some stuff, including Healing Factor, <laughs> potentially, and other stuff as well, like um, just, just the passives that the Sinister Six have. And we didn't really get to see Electro doing what he can do. He seems really, really good on paper, honestly. And I didn't realise, but yeah, anyone who has a built-in shove or can just get rid of him after attacks is just a complete hard counter to his shenanigans. So the Hulkbuster was actually just the perfect counter. Had no idea about that going in, did not realise. But yeah, he wants characters to walk near him or to attack him from within range 3. The Hulkbuster circumvented that. So, travelling around the scenery is a cool feature for him, for sure. Definitely a lot of things you could do with that. So yeah, I don't think we saw him to his full potential. He seems really good. Sandman, eh, I mean, eh. Sure, remember his healing factor, that helps a little bit, but he's got to damage himself to get his uh, constructs out. So, he isn't that great, he seems like a decent backline sitter, like he probably should have sat in the back and let Doc Ock try and do stuff. But, either way, they did fine, it was fairly close, there was only four Avengers obviously against technically seven enemies if you count both grunts. So it was definitely a, a wide list versus just a strong small list. And hopefully we'll see the Sinister Six type set up again in the future against Web Warriors like it should be. A nice thematic match. Spider, spider people versus spider foes. Either way, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to show your support for the series by liking, commenting, or subscribing. And if you can spare it to go above and beyond, consider pressing the thanks button. Or becoming a channel member, you get access to certain video series early before anyone else, including this. You'll see this a week early if you're a channel member. Or, if you want to pick up something for yourself, including Crisis Protocol, check out my channel sponsor. That's where I get Crisis Protocol stuff from currently. Um, and if you buy anything from Noble Night Games via my affiliate link, I get compensated as well. So we both get something. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you next time. The time for now.